Mr. Pandian, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you, Jai Jagannath. Welcome to Odisha. Welcome to Puri. Thank you. It's a beautiful city. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Lovely. Yeah. Um, we are in the midst of elections, uh, Lok Sabha as well as Assembly elections. Now, uh, Naveen Babu contested uh, in the elections today in the two seats. Um, what's the feedback from the ground? Uh, Honorable CM will be winning both the seats with huge majorities. Mm -hmm. And if he wins both the seats, he will have to give up one of the seats. What he'll decide uh, after the elections are over. Generally, he does it. Last time also, he did that. Okay. Well, Mr. Pandian, you are seen as a, or you call yourself a son of the Odisha soil, uh, even though you are from Tamil Nadu. You have been here for 30 years or so. I I say that uh, my identity in Odisha is of a worker of Odisha, karma yogi in Odisha. I my all my work I have done in Odisha for Navin Babu and the people of Odisha. Now, the best way to be a karma yogi is to represent the people of Odisha. Wouldn't you want to contest at least one seat uh, that uh, Mr. Patnaik uh, will vacate? See, I am very focused on what I am doing. I took this conscious call to help the chief minister in getting his sixth term. So, everything else can wait. I am very focused on helping the chief minister get his next term. All right, let's move away to a larger picture of BJD in Odisha. Uh, what, what do you think are the prospects of B, uh, BJD, both in the Lok Sabha elections as well as the Assembly? By God's grace and with people's support, Biju Jantadal is sweeping the polls. BJD will get more than three-fourth three majority. And we have fixed the time for oath-taking as well. <laughs> On 9th June at between 11.30 to 1 p.m., the Honorable Chief Minister will swear in as this, for as his sixth term, sixth for term. his sixth term. And I am not telling, if you go and ask anyone, they will tell that June 9th CM will swear in. Okay. And uh, what about the Lok Sabha? Do you have any predictions? We will for that? get more than what we had last time. Okay. Because Lok Sabha is too huge to sure. assess and uh, tell exactly. But I know that we are doing much better than last time. Yeah. So I had interviewed uh, the Prime Minister, and he is saying that there is a large anti incumbency wave in Odisha and people are fed up of this government and uh, the words he used was that BJD will not be able to survive survive these elections. Uh, I would like your reaction, please. He told the same thing in 2019 as well. He said that people are going to give farewell for Navin Babu. So Navin Babu replied back in a humble way, in his own style, said that uh, two, two phases of elections are over and uh, Biju Jantadal has got already majority. So I would humbly invite you for my swearing in. This was 2019. This time the Honorable PM has used the word expiry date. Mm. So it is the same. Farewell or expiry it is the same. And uh, Navin Babu will get three-fourth majority and he, we will again invite the Honorable PM for the swearing in. This time only, only we hope that he comes with some gift for the swearing in. Mm -hmm. The gifts being, I told today in a public meeting as well. Yeah. Number one is that um, uh, our demand for special category status is pending mm -hmm. for a long time. Yeah. So perhaps that will be the best gift to give to the state when Navin Babu takes over as the Honorable Chief Minister for sixth term. Number two, the Honorable PM has promised that he will pay 3,100 rupees to the farmers as minimum support price. And they have put this is Modi guarantee. Everywhere they have publicized. So the Honorable PM should, that perhaps that should be his first order to make the farmers of India happy, not just Odisha. That, is, that, that may be his second gift. And the third gift is that from 2004, the state of Odisha is waiting for coal royalty revision. Mm -hmm. The union government is taking about 27,000 crores every year from the state on coal, from coal, from MCL alone. And the state gets only 4,000 crores. We get a lot of pollution. There are so many displacement issues and everything. Perhaps the Honorable PM may like to revise the coal royalty and make it 12,000 crores or something, which will help uh, the people of those affected areas. So, not just invitation, we also request the Honorable PM to come with some gifts for Odisha this time. People of Odisha will be very happy. Sure. Um, politics aside, uh, Mr. Modi and Mr. Patnaik, they share an excellent uh, rapport. Absolutely. On a personal basis, Absolutely. they are almost like uh, good yeah. friends. Now, but... And the uh, the NDA was, I mean, you were part of NDA at some at, at one point. The relations till 2009. BJP, yes, and BJP and BJD also had good relations. You tried to stitch together an alliance before the elections, but that didn't work out. 
Can you tell us why it didn't work out? I have made it uh, yeah. earlier also in my statements that uh, it was between two leaders who wanted to come together for a larger cause. Uh, the local leaders of BJP did not appreciate it. So that's how it went. So I don't want to blame anyone or get into the nitty gritties of that. Sure. But that aside, the differences aside, if, um, if the BJP emerges as the largest party in the elections and they form a government with NDA, that does not preclude you from joining the NDA, right? Uh, we have just completed two phases of polls. You know how bitterly we are fighting each other. So these things we have, these hypothetical questions we should not be answering now. And uh, we are fighting the BJP and the Congress equally, strongly in the field right now. Yeah, let me then ask you, um, between BJP and Congress, who do you see as a bigger enemy? No, there is nothing enemical about uh, either of Political them. Political enemy. Either way, I think uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Odisha, about 20% uh, of the seats we are fighting with Congress, 25% of the seats. Yeah. In maybe 35% of the seats we are fighting with BJP. The rest seats BJD is, fight, BJD is so strong that <laughs> it doesn't matter who we are fighting. So we are fighting, it's a, it's a little variation in percentage, that's it. <laughs> So Electorally, we see. So you can say they're both equal enemies or equal friends or absolutely, however you absolutely, might call them. Absolutely, absolutely. It's election time. It's election time, yeah. Now, India, Indie Bloc, uh, India Alliance Bloc is very confident of winning this time. They say that there is an uh, undercurrent of revolution that no one is seeing and they will form a government. But they will not be able to form a government easily. Would you be willing to join that uh, coalition? So I, I know would you said it's a hypothetical I would like question, to but repeat it. We are fighting a lot of seats against Congress right now. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll leave it at that. Yeah. And, uh, I, have got, I have a question All about... All this after June 4th. Sure, sure, sure. I have a question about Naveen Babu. He's an extreme gentleman. His campaigns are extremely civilized. Absolutely. Right? He does not uh, make personal attacks. On the other hand, the other parties have made a lot of personal attacks, yeah? So, don't you think that this sharp pitch, or do you think that this sharp pitch that has been raised has created an unsavory atmosphere in the I politics fully, today? I fully agree. I fully agree. The Honorable Chief Minister always believes in uh, graceful conduct, <laughs> if I may put it. Graceful conduct, whether it is bureaucracy, whether it is administration, whether it is work, politics, personal space. Uh, perhaps in politics, grace is one word which is very far away from, uh, so it's, uh, grace is much bigger and larger and deeper than decency in politics. So when somebody is going all out against a person who is so graceful in his conduct, people of Odisha who love Navin Babu are very hurt by the statements made by the visiting chief ministers or central leaders against the CM. He's a very popular CM. So one, you attack a very popular CM, it helps the chief minister in getting more votes. That's one way of looking at it. Um, the other way of looking at it is also that BJP has brought in so many union ministers. Some of them actually camped here. Uh, the Prime Minister, Mr. Rajnath Singh, Mr. Amit Shah, they've all come and And then camped. three, four chief ministers as well. They have uh, as well come. So it, some people might see it as that BJP is sensing an opportunity here, which is why they are sending the big guns. Do you feel threatened? So 2014 also they did the same thing. 2019 also they did the same thing. And people of Odisha see them as political tourists. They come once in five years. They don't understand head or tail about Odisha. If you ask them what is the capital of Bhuneshwar, uh, capital of Odisha, many of them may not be able to tell. So they, don't, they, ha they lack, other than uh, the central leaders, the chief minister who are coming from outside, they may not know much about uh, Odisha. They are just given sheets of paper by the local leadership and they read it out. And that's how they say that uh, the Assam chief minister made a statement saying that I will make Odisha number one. Because the local BJP had given a statement to him saying that you say that you will make Odisha number one. So the honorable chief minister Namin Babu asked him, if you will make Odisha number one, what will you make Assam of? Your Assam has double the uh, debt, uh, uh, per capita debt than of Odisha. How do you just go and focus on your state? So the leaders who are coming from outside basically are given sh sheets by the local leadership. They don't apply their mind. They don't know any ground reality. So people of Odisha la laugh about them or they don't take them seriously. Okay. They are basically come to uh, 
lift the confidence of uh, local BJP, uh, that's okay. It's their internal yeah. government stuff, uh, internal party stuff. You uh, mentioned that some of them don't even know the capital of Odisha. Speaking of capitals, I'm reminded that the Prime Minister had dared... Uh, that's I mean, why I purposefully <laughs> used this word. <laughs> because it was, it, it was not in... Uh, it was, not, it was not liked by the people of Odisha that a chief minister who has served them for 24 years should be questioned that way. It's something which, uh, which people felt hurt. That's what I felt at the yeah. field level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, uh, anyway, politic, in politics everything happens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, the BJP has also accused you personally of controlling the CM's residence and the CM's office. Then they have also brought up this. So in uh, 2002, 2004, they alleged against somebody else. From 2004 to 2009, 10, they alleged about somebody else. So off late from 2011, this is like one and a half decades ka story, their allegation about uh, uh, the chief minister. It doesn't work. People know who is doing what. People know what commitment ke saath go, uh, Navin Babu is working. And the last elections, if we may take it as a measure of Naveen Babu's popularity. He won 30 out of 30 Zilla Parishad's uh, districts. 30 out of 30. It's record of all time anywhere in the country. Yeah. So that's how people uh, honor chief minister's work. They can make political statements. It's up to them. So but it doesn't cut eyes. The, nobody, you think, believes that you know you no. are controlling the residence, you are controlling the office. So or people will believe they're, they're, it should reflect in somewhere. This is a political statement narrative be, tra being tried by BJP because they don't have any other narrative against the chief minister. They lack any narrative against the chief minister. If they say that 24 years he has anti incumbency why don't you show your CM face? You are so scared to announce anyone as your chief minister face because Navin Babu's popularity is so much. You put anyone as a CM face, they'll, they'll look very hollow. And BJ, BJD, already they are getting three-fourth majority. BJP will get less than 10 seats. Now, we are sitting in Puri, which is the house of Lord Jagannath and the famous temple that I visited uh, Sri Mandir. a uh, little while ago. Now, that temple has a place in the hearts of many uh, Indians and also among the Odia people. Now, there is some controversy about the keys of the, of the, of the treasury of the temple. Now, just today, the Prime Minister also made an accusation that maybe the keys have gone to Tamil Nadu. Have they gone to Tamil Nadu, the keys? Or? The Prime Minister should find out where it has gone then. If he has so much knowledge, perhaps I would humbly request the Honourable Prime Minister. He has so many, so many authorities under him. He would be having some knowledge and he can tell, he can enlighten the people of Odisha. He is making a political statement, so we will take it like that. But the government was supposed to issue a report on the status of the of the treasury, no? The affidavit is filed before the Honorable High Court. The Honorable High Court ordered that uh, the state government, uh, the uh, uh, Jagannath Temple administration to open the Ratnabandar at a time fixed by the administration. So they have decided during Ratyatra time when pilgrims will not be there and nitis of Lord will not be affected. So the SJTA headed by Puri Gajapati Maharaj have decided to open. The government's role was in appointing a retired chief uh, justice of the Supreme Court. So justice of Supreme Court has been appointed, a committee have been appointed. And I think today I made in my speech that we would humbly request the Honorable PM also to come and witness the Ratnabandar opening after 40 years, four decades. In these four decades, one decade was BJP ministers who handled this. So perhaps they should find out where the keys are from them. Hmm. But the uh, Ratna Bhandar will be opened, you are saying? Absolutely. The date, I think the date is uh, known, fixed. fixed, yeah. Okay. It is just political narrative because they don't have any other issue yeah. and they are in a weak wicket. Whenever BJP is in a weak wicket, they will talk about all other issues other than the core issues of employment, price rise, inflation, issues which affect the common masses. Right. So you can get a hint of what BJP is facing here by seeing the rhetoric which they take it forward as a narrative. Sure, sure. Uh, I've got another question about Naveen Babu. He was, when he came into politics many years ago, he was called a reluctant politician. But the reluctant politician has been a CM for five times and possibly for a sixth time. What is it, despite coming from the, from the cold, 
where he had no experience of politics, what makes him connect with people? He is not a politician even now. Yes. Even today he is not a politician. Mm -hmm. He is a good human being with a heart to serve the people of Odisha. He doesn't do politics. If he has done politics, he would not have survived in politics. He has not done politics. He has just used politics as a means to serve the people of Odisha. That's why he has survived in, po in politics. And he has pro-incumbency. After five terms, he has pro-incumbency and we are in the middle of an Avin wave. Yeah. So you're saying that maybe India should not have any politicians at all, real politicians and actually have sincere no, people who... I mean to uh, say is that with all humility, I would say that if you see power as a means of serving people and if the people are able to identify that quality of yours, then you will succeed. So it has both aspects. First, you should see power as a means to serve, right. not as a uh, means to accumulate or enjoy or cherish. The other aspect is people of that place or your electorate should know this man is here to serve us. Is there a lack of such people in Indian politics? I think we can have more, I would say like that. We can definitely have more Naveen Babus. Yeah. But, uh, as on date, I don't think anyone is there as tall as Naveen Babu as it comes to, when it comes to uh, that graceful conduct, impeccable integrity, commitment, service. And that's why he is, after two and a half decades, still continues to be the most popular chief minister of the country in all surveys. And he has pro incumbency And he is going to create a record of uh, being the longest serving chief minister in the country in August. Now, you have said in an interview to PTI. Mr. Pandian, you have said that you are a successor to Mr. Patnaik's values. What did you mean by that exactly? In fact, everyone should try to imbibe his values. He is such a great human being, good soul. His values are something one should try and imbibe. That's what I meant. Is there a succession plan in the party? Naveen Babu has always said, that people of Odisha will decide the succession whenever it has to happen, whenever it has to happen. Yeah. Then BJP has also been talking a lot about uh, Odia Asmita, the Odia language. I think it's a reference to you and also to the fact that uh, Naveen Babu was not... Uh, you know. This is their narrative for last 24 years against Naveen Babu. Mm. And they have added me as well now in this. Yeah. It's okay, people of Odisha will give a befitting reply on June 4th. This is the same government, central government, which has not done anything for Odia as a classical language, Odyssey as a classical music. The great freedom fighters of Odisha, they have not been honored. Neither the Paiko movement, which is the first war of independence, has been recognized. Nor Biju Babu, who is such a great son of the soil, has been honored with Bharat Ratna. Or for that matter, whatever the center could do for the state, that has, been, that has not been done. So, their narrative of Odia Asmita is going to be a self goal for them and June 4th will show it to them. Yeah. I'll just move away from politics and come to the governance. Uh, two questions on governance. One is the migration is a big issue in Odisha. So can you tell, tell us? Uh, so migration is a historical issue, yeah. not just for Odisha, yeah. Bihar, Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh, West Bengal, Uttar Pradesh, all these states. But you would be happy to know Odisha migration rates have come down. All our surveys have shown, inter uh, international agencies ka surveys have shown. Distress migration, have, migration has almost come to zero. The migration as such also, the rate of migration has come down. Odisha's unemployment is one of the lowest, one unemployment rate is one of the lowest in the country. We are 0.2 or 0.3 percent, much below most of the states. Haryana has the highest, where double engine Sarkar is there. <laughs> so, we are doing very well. Um, how do you, how do you uh, improve a situation, a financial situation of an individual? You have to improve the per capita income. Yes. Odisha had had one of the biggest jump in per capita income of individuals. And uh, going by this trend, in next three, four years, we should breach the national average. We were one of the lowest in the country. We are just going to breach the national average. And we'll, we'll f go further up. Yeah. Uh, uh, Odisha will mark uh, its 100th year in 2036. And I believe that the government of uh, Mr. Naveen Patnaik has already made plans to... Absolutely. So, 20, 24 to 2034, one decade, the chief minister has made a plan involving the youth of the state. 
he will be the first chief minister to make a youth budget, 10,000 crores a year, so 1 lakh crores in 10 years. This youth budget will give an ecosystem for the youth to be the best in skills, to get the best of investments, to get the best of new world economy to Odisha and higher education, technical education, transformation in higher education and technical education, so that you have an ecosystem where the youth can dream big and achieve their dreams. So through the youth of Odisha, he wants to achieve this new Odisha, empowered Odisha. By 2034, he believes in having a buffer time always. So 2036 means two years before you should have it. Mr. Pandian, we are running out of time. Absolutely. Thank you so much for thank coming you. to thank us. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice talking. Nice talking. Thank you. Thank you.